Hey, have you tried using that uh, co-pilot button in your Power BI report yet? You're wondering what that button might do? What about the prep your data for AI button right next to it? My name is Justin from Pragmatic Works, and I'm here to give you some insight. We continue to see huge leaps regarding AI integration, including the role of co-pilot in Power BI. Before we get too far into this, just wanted to point out that check out all of our co-pilot content on YouTube. Get plugged into that Pragmatic Works YouTube channel. So hit subscribe and like this video, but stay in touch because this stuff is changing fast and we're gonna be pumping out a lot of content. All right, before we go any further, let's talk about licensing for Copilot. So the workspace that we're talking about here must be assigned to either paid premium Power BI capacity, P1, or any of the F SKUs, fabric capacity, other than the trial. All right, so trial is not going to work. This used to be F64 and above. So you may see some documentation out there. It is older documentation. Microsoft did change this to F2 and above as long as it's paid. So no trial SKUs and paid capacity is required. Your tenant admin must also enable Copilot at the tenant level via the setting known as users can use Copilot and other features powered by Azure Open AI. So if you just go into the tenant settings in Fabric, click on the search bar, type in Copilot, and that setting is the first one that you'll see. And the region or geography of your Fabric capacity must be one of those supported regions for Copilot, North American regions, European boundary, look for things like that. Regarding the Power BI desktop, and I will show you the prep data for AI button in desktop in this video, but just having the desktop installed isn't enough. The workspace and capacity conditions must also be met for this all to work properly. Let's talk about what the standalone Copilot experience looks like. I'm gonna go to my powerbi.com service and open that up for us. Here it is. What I wanna show you first is I just clicked on the Copilot button here. I'm not in Fabric or anything, I'm just in Power BI, powerbi.com. I'm gonna click on Copilot and I'm going to ask a question. Now this is gonna look across all my data. So let's start with a simple question. I do a lot of trainings that involve the famous failed bank scenario. So let's do how many banks failed in 2025. So it's looking at a lot of things. Now this is pros and cons here. It's looking at all of my workspaces, but it's looking at all of my workspaces. <laughs> so this can be a real problem in getting an accurate response back. All right, now uh, this question came back uh, with an answer of two. So it means two banks failed in 2025. Now I happen to know that this answer is correct, but just before this video, when I checked and when I did the same exact thing, I got an answer of 572, which means that it was giving me all of the failed banks through 2025. And this speaks to the non-deterministic nature of Copilot in Power BI. Uh, non-deterministic means that you could get a slightly different answer even asking the same question just because that's the way this product works. Uh, it learns from itself. So again, I just got an answer of 572, which was wrong. And now I've got an answer that is correct. And you can see where the answer is coming from. It's coming from this particular report from November 4th. I'm going to go to that report and just verify that this answer is correct. So there's my report. It's going to take a second to load here. I'm going to throw in a slicer and that slicer is going to have my year column on it. And I'm just going to take this down to 2025 only. So that's a uh, slider, slicer setting or a between setting. And I can see that there are two. So in this case, Copilot got it right. But just a few minutes ago, it got it wrong. So let's go back to take that slicer out of there. That was just for verification purposes. Let's go back to that Copilot experience in my powerbi.com. So I'm going to go to the semantic model associated with that report in a workspace. All right. So let's head over there. So we've got the report pulled up. It's in this workspace. I won't save changes to the report. I'm going to go into the semantic model for this report. Here we go. And I'm going to find this button prep data for AI. Now you're going to see this button also in the Power BI desktop. But here I am showing you the prep data for AI button in the semantic model. Let's see if we can prep data for AI. Oh, wait a minute. We don't have access to Copilot in this workspace. Let's go back to the workspace, take a look at the workspace settings and the license info. So let's see why I'm not able to prep data for AI. I'm on a pro license 
attached to this workspace. Now I do have fabric capacity, so I could change this and that would get Copilot up and running. Now we have courses coming out on our on-demand platform that explain how to get Copilot ready to go for your Power BI experience in Fabric. So getting Copilot prepared in Fabric. We also have prepping your data for AI course. We also have making data agents. So all this stuff is tied together, Copilot being the common thread. I can't prep for data because this particular report is in a workspace that is not supported. So you must be in an F2 or above, not a free trial, and P1 will work as well. Paid premium Power BI capacity. Let's head over to a workspace that does have the ability. So I'm gonna to go to my workspaces that are available to me, and I'm gonna head into this Copilot in Fabric testing workspace that I've been working in, and I'm gonna open the Fabricam company sales report semantic model, and I'm gonna press the prep data for AI. Now, this one is ready, okay? So I can prep this model for AI. This one does open for me because this is in a workspace that is tied to a fabric capacity. So all of the prep data for AI options are right here. Simplify the data schema, verify answers, add AI instructions. All of that is what I need to go through next. But I can do that in the Power BI desktop as well. So let's head over to Power BI desktop. I've got two reports ready for us. Let me show you those right now. On one side, I've got a report that needs preparation. So on the left side of my screen, I've got a report that has not gone through any preparation for AI use. On the right side, I do have a report that has been prepped. Let's ask the question, do we need to prep data for AI? Not necessarily, okay? The analogy here is Copilot can still look at this report that needs preparation and provide an answer, but it's going to do so as a well-trained but new data analyst, someone who doesn't know the company's data quite enough, whereas the prepped version is going to provide an answer as a veteran of that organization, somebody who knows the data and has the data analytics skills. So compare that perfectly competent but new data analyst compared to the data analyst that has been around for a while in this organization. Okay, so let's go to the needs preparation report first. Let's go to that prep data for AI button. And here are the three choices. Simplify the data schema, verify answers, add AI instructions. Now I'm just going to touch the surface of it in this video, but we have these longer courses where you can explore more of this on our on-demand platform. So make sure you check that out. Simplify the data schema means I can choose columns or measures that I want Copilot to use or ignore. They don't go anywhere. They're just not going to be seen by Copilot. They're not actually hidden. Verified answers is a way to tell Power BI if somebody asks this, this is okay to answer with this particular visual. And then add AI instructions is where I added our very first AI instruction here. And you can see, I want to say if asked about highest or most or best selling product, first clarify if the user wants product by unit sold or by total sales value. Now you can tell that when I ask an ambiguous question and a data analyst might ask me a question back. If I say, what's our best selling product, that data analyst is going to say, well, and so here I want Copilot to do that as well. So let's see if it does. I'm going to go to the Copilot experience by clicking the button. The pane opens up on the right. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my visualizations pane uh, and my data pane just for ease here. Let's go to get started and I'm going to tell Power BI what is our highest selling product. All right, so let's see what we get back here. Copilot is telling me that there are more than two ways to answer this, right? There are two ways to define getting the highest selling product. So they want me, Copilot's asking me to specify if I'm interested in the product, the highest sales value or the one with the total number of units sold. So it's doing what I asked, right? Now that is just one instruction that I've given this particular Copilot. So let's go over to the prepped version. I'm going to go ahead and click on that prep data for AI. I'm going to look at my AI instructions again, and I'm going to look at, okay, it's got that same first question, but I also have further instructions. So if I do ask about the best selling product, I should get a specific answer with the highest total units sold. And in fact, I should even get one of my verified answers here. So this model has been prepped. And again, we have courses that show you more on how to do this, but there's a, a bunch of verified answers here and there's a bunch of 
AI instructions. So let's see how this experience differs. Click the Copilot button to open the pane. I'm going to close these other panes just to have more space. And I'm going to ask the same question. What is our highest selling product? So this is likely to be a little bit quicker of an experience because this model has been prepped, but we'll see. So we've got an answer here. One, my question matched a verified answer. What's our highest selling product? So think about the timeline that this used to take. A request gets put into, at one point, IT, or later on, a business analyst, a data analyst. Now it can be anybody who's using Power BI can set this up and answer the question from somebody else in the organization about the data. So let's see if that's right. Now, Air Cushion Blue is the highest selling product. And I do have a highest selling product page on this report. Let's see if Air Cushion Blue is the product with the highest total sales. This question was answered by one of my verified answers. So a very different experience with this report than the unprepped report. Let me give you one more example here as a bonus before we move on. All right, so we look at our needs preparation report. And let's ask the question, what month during busy season has the most sales? Let's see what Copilot says to this question. Copilot has responded. To do that, Copilot needs a couple clarifications. In other words, it doesn't know what busy season is, so it can't tell me what month during busy season has the most sales. Busy season hasn't been defined. Besides, by most sales, what do I mean? So this one, it's asking me these questions, but as a perfectly competent but new data analyst, whereas this other co-pilot experience in the prepped model, I'll switch it back over to this page so we can tell the difference between the two models uh, very easily. The prepped model, I'm going to ask the same question, month, what month during busy season has the most sales? But in this model, busy season has been defined. So with busy season defined, Copilot can answer this question without asking anything clarifying, without being confused. So as Copilot is looking for a question, or looking for the answer here, let's take a moment here. Let's look at this experience as we look at any other experience with Power BI. Garbage in, garbage out. When we set up our data model, we are making that Copilot experience much better for not just us, but for our end users as well. During the busy season, which has been defined September to December, the month with the highest sales is December, all right? So what's interesting about this experience is that I can limit the interaction. Now it's a good thing to interact with Copilot, but here I'm getting to the point much faster. So that's the point of prepping data for AI and how to use that Copilot button. So we went from a workspace, we looked at the workspace settings, we looked at the standalone Copilot experience that looks at all your workspaces. And then we got inside the report here and looked at the prep data for AI and the Copilot button. Remember, we're doing consulting now, so reach out to us. We made a course recently called Chat With Your Data In A Day, which includes stuff like this. So look for that coming out in the very near future, along with more courses on the on-demand platform, like I mentioned, related to this topic. So how are you preparing for the increasing role of AI in Power BI and other Microsoft Fabric? Our training and consulting departments are in full swing. So reach out to us. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.